Good evening, Jay. It's Thursday, and yes, the walls are yellow. So today is still one of my vacation days, and I very much intend to savor as much of that as possible. So this video will probably go pretty quickly. Jay, today I want to play devil's advocate for a quick second and say that beavers don't care about the other creatures living in their shared environment. Specifically, the point I kind of want to make is in regard to the fact that beavers, of course, make dams. And those dams, of course, have no thought or anything considered towards the other uh, fish or creatures or anything that share that environment, the other things that kind of live in that same river where the dam is built. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because I don't really feel like many other creatures on earth have any type of regard for the impact that they have towards anything else so for example when a beaver makes a dam basically if that's going to affect any other fish or any other creature that lives in that shared area over a long enough period of time either that creature would be eradicated because the dam was a problem or that fish or creature would come to uh, include that dam as kind of part of their normal living and ha living habitat. So let's say that we have a normal river perch that has its normal typical breeding patterns and it goes upstream for one reason or another to complete those patterns and now the dam is in the way. So instead now we have a fish that starts to slowly incorporate the dam into its lifestyle and all of a sudden we start to call that fish instead of a upriver fish or a river stream fish or a log perch or something in, in that line we start to call it a beaver fish or a beaver perch and it's basically we call it that because it's made its home within the beaver's environment it's it's evolved to adapt to that uh, change to its natural environment. The fact is, Jay, that almost every single animal in one way or another affects the livelihood of the things that share their own environment. So, for example, one of the things I want to talk about is something that I have in every single one of my aquariums, and that is both hermit crabs and snails, both of which use a calcified shell as basically their means of protection and essentially their home. And those shells, the snails can actually build them themselves from birth. They slowly will create a larger and larger shell. The hermit crabs, on the other hand, and either have to scavenge for them or they have to basically kill another snail in order to get that home. So I feel like at one point in the process along the way, the hermit crabs began to have a significant impact on the snail population because all of a sudden their population began to grow and of course they needed to have homes and those homes can only be found in snail shells. So I feel like at some point those hermit crabs had to practice some form of population control specifically because if they didn't then they would essentially run out of homes and be no no longer able to live because there would be not enough shells available for them to have their safe haven. So essentially we have population control to preserve the snails, but not to preserve the snails, but rather to preserve the snails. Essentially they can't kill off the snail population because if they do, then they no longer have a source of homes. And Jay, basically what I'm getting towards is this kind of human impact on the worldwide environment. And I'm definitely not making the point that I think we should maintain the status quo in that animals should slowly evolve to the point where they are just able to use human effects on the worldwide environment as just kind of part of those their own normal defense mechanisms like there shouldn't be like smog seagulls or the P the BP seal that essentially uses oil spillage as a form of defense mechanism so that they are like harmful to be eaten by other creatures or anything. And basically I think it's incredible that humans in general at all even care about the impact that we're having on the environment at large, especially for creatures that are not just even like serving a purpose for us. We just want to save all creatures that so that we're not necessarily what caused it to be eradicated. It'd be like if a beaver built a dam and instead of just building a normal beaver dam and with no other reason other than sole respect for the other creatures that share their space, they included little throughways and riverways and tunnels so that all of the existing fish in that river would not be affected by the impact that they've included on that dam. So that those fish would not someday become a beaver perch or a beaver bass or some type of fish that is named because it makes its home within a beaver dam. It could just continue to be whatever it was to begin with. And so I guess for my question of the day, do you think that the way that humans affect nature and earth could be seen as something that is basically just the natural effect of another animal living on the planet. Just the same way that when a beaver built a dam once upon a time, it had an impact on the, uh, the other fish and the other creatures that it shared its environment with. Do you think that our impact on Earth is just the natural impact that we would be having? Because no matter what, no matter how unusual and how many man-made and artificial products they are, 
they still all had to come from natural things that we found here on Earth. They aren't things that have just been made out of thin air. So I guess what I'm trying to almost make the argument for just purely for arguments and conversational sake is do you think that that's a natural impact? Leave it in the towel section down below. And Jay, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.